Hi, I'm Zachary Canfer, and this is Making Music in Emacs. So over quarantine, I've been bored at home, and I found this Android app called Anti-Stress with a bunch of mini games and activities, uh, one of which is a way to make some, some music, some digital music. And it's pretty cool, but kind of as with a lot of things, I want more features than the original app has. So I thought about it and I said, you know, well, I'm a programmer, I could make something like this. I just need to, to build it on a system that has a lot of flexibility and customizability. And when I think about that kind of system, I think about Emacs. Now, Emacs is a text editor with a history going all the way back to the 70s. And it's super customizable. One of the coolest things about it is the language that they use to build Emacs is the same language that you can use to extend it. So anything they can do, the developers can do, you can also do. Uh, so I looked into uh, the, the, the features that Emacs has, and uh, it actually turns out that it can play sounds. Uh, and at least the way it plays sounds is with something called WAV files. But what are WAV files? So I searched the internet a little bit, and turns out that WAV is just a musical file format. Or as I came to learn, it's kind of an annoying file format. And here's why. So numbers can either be one, a one byte numbers can be unsigned, but if you have a two byte number, it's actually a signed integer, which is inconsistent. Uh, and it's little ending by default. You can switch it to big ending, but if you do that, Emacs can't play it. So little ending it is, which I just find confusing to think about. And there's duplicate data fields. So here are three fields that are, those make sense. But then we have another field, block align, that you just multiply a couple of the other fields together. So it, like, it's entirely uh, a, a combination of those other, other fields. But you need to have it or it's not a WAV file. And even more so, there's a, an, this other field that is just you multiply three of them together. So you can entirely calculate that, but you have to do it and put it in the file. So the last part of the file, the biggest part of the file, is data. Or as one website that I found described it, the actual sound data. Now, what is data? And I looked more, I found some more descriptions of it. And it turns out that, uh, so it, sound is a wave, it's a waveform. And if you just measure the height of that waveform, uh, that's what the data is. So this sample one, uh, it starts at eight, goes nine, 11, 13, 14, 15, then back down. If you just put those numbers in the file, that's all the data is. So great, now we can, now we can write a wave file. So let me demo uh, Z music. So uh, the, the highlighted blue row is a beat. And if we start playing, you see it's going to go down and it's going to wrap. Uh, and you can use the mouse to add some notes. And you can see we even have, we can have beats with multiple notes on it. That, that's fine to do also. Uh, so this is a really simple Z music, but that's fine. So some other features that I didn't have time to demo, uh, you can have different scales. What we used uh, is the minor pentatonic, which I picked because basically every note sounds good with every other note. That's not the case for most other scales. But if you want to, you can swap out to for a minor scale, a major scale, any other scale you want. Uh, and you can also save your music to a file. Uh, and the interesting part here is that I had to make silent notes. Normally, if there's no notes on a beat, we just don't play anything for that time step. But if we're writing to a file, we have to put some data there to say, don't make any noise during this time period. And I also have terrible sounding keyboard support. You'll see why later. Here's some things I learned about Emacs. So spacing issues. So those things I was clicking on, those dashes in the beat, those are buttons in Emacs. Uh, and because of the way Emacs buttons work, you can't put two right next to each other. There has to be a character between them. Now you could put a space between them, which would work, 
But then I found you might accidentally click on the space when, you know, especially if you're trying to go quickly. So I looked into Unicode to see if there's any characters that I could put there that maybe wouldn't be as big. And I found something called a zero with space, which is great. So I can put that character as not part of the bu either button in the middle, but it won't take up any space so you won't accidentally click on it. But interestingly, this zero with space in Emacs has width. So we're just going to insert a greater than symbol, 200 zero with spaces, and then a less than symbol. And if it really had zero width, the, those, those two, uh, the greater than the less than symbols would be right up against each other. But we see that here they actually have width. Uh, and what's happening is, I think what's happening is the character itself has zero width, but between each set of characters, Emacs reserves one pixel of width for the cursor. It's hard to see, but there's, there's, a, there's a line flashing there. That's the cursor between two zero width spaces, I think. But it's still pretty close to zero width. So, so the first couple ways I tried to play sound don't actually work. So like we, we were talking about before, Emacs can play sound, can play these WAV files, but it blocks while it's playing them, which is not great if you want to do things like add other notes while it's playing or even pause it. Uh, Emacs does have asynchronous uh, ways of coding, but if you do that, it doesn't make any noise, and I don't actually know why. So the way I went with that works is you just take that wave data and you write it to disk, and then you shell out to the native wave player on your operating system. And that works as long as you only do it once at a time. Because uh, if, you, if you have multiple, uh, if, you, if you call that multiple times at, at the same time, if they're overlapping, you'll get really weird interference. Uh, and that's why the keyboard from before doesn't work well. So here's the one thing I learned about music theory. Music theory is not easy to program with. Uh, when I was looking for some concepts to, to program with, I started, I found scale degrees. But you don't want to program with scale degrees. So if we look, uh, this is a low C, and then, so that's the first, the second of the scale, all the way up. This is the next C, it's a C an octave up. And that's also a first. So with scale degrees by themselves, you can't really differentiate between that, which isn't great if you want to have at least an octave. So then I found intervals. And it turns out you don't want to really program the intervals either. It does solve some of the problems. So we see over here, uh, the octave is eight, so that works. But you see we have like a major third or a minor third. So there's this extra data you have to kind of keep along with it. You can't just say a third. So I thought about it, music's really frequencies. So at a low level, we're just gonna say uh, like an A, like a concert A is just 440 Hertz. And that's what we're gonna use at the really low level. The level that humans are gonna use, I'm gonna say there's a root note, and then we're just gonna say how many semitones up from that root note you are. Uh, and then we're just at the between that and the low level, we're just gonna translate those to frequencies and use them, and it's gonna work fine. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I have uh, notes, references, and source code at zck.org slash bangbangcon2021. I'm a co-organizer of emacsmyc.org. Uh, and feel free to email me. And I think we have about a little over a minute, so let's uh, do some more music. One of the cool things is as you're building it up, the, the music kind of becomes more layered. And so it sounds like a more complicated uh, song than it, than it is just based on the music at any one time. You'll see what I mean.
Thank you.